Away from the, the guy in the gold car. You couldn't have parked in a better spot. Excellent. <laughs> Alright, so this is uh, I Am In A Car. I think this is actually episode number five. Nice. So I got uh, Mike McKinnon beside me. Hello. Awesome dude. Uh, works <laughs> with uh, the Austic Group. I'm not sure um, how much public information we're allowed to talk about right now, but in terms of what's going on there, but I'll just leave it, oh, I'll it. Leave it on the hush-hush. You can okay. do your introduction, I guess. Yeah. We've been working with Mike for, ooh, I don't know, better part of three years, going into four. Yeah. Uh, it's been unbelievable. We uh, there are very many teams I think that execute the way you guys do. It's just been a pleasure to work with you guys, and it's just awesome to see like how you guys work with your team and how you kind of run the company. So well, vice stoked, versa, stoked to have you. Good on the show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> party! <laughs> um, so yeah, I want to just give a quick little intro in terms of where you came from and what you guys are up to now. Yeah. So um, the Austin Group is a uh, it's a combination of. Um, insurance and wealth management so we do personal lines commercial lines insurance we've got uh, a good chunk under wealth management personal wealth management and uh, so we've got Austic insurance and we've got Austic financial and that makes the Austic group yeah and uh, the one thing we've worked on over the course of the last well yeah probably three and a half four years is our culture like our mission our vision our values and that's where you guys plug in in terms of being able to help push that out into the uh, into our communities um, we are community focused um, now, so more than ever. Given again, up with you guys, which has been fantastic. Okay, but yeah, it's been a good plugs, ride. No, no, money. It's been a good ride, man. It's been a lot of fun. Like it's, uh, I love the fact that we're like, we knew we had to get more digital, and we joke around because we're old guys that yeah, you know, the internet's on computers now, ha ha ha. But uh, you guys showed us what we need to do, so well, it's good. Thank you. It's not the point of today. So like, how did you get involved with the Austin Group? Oh, me personally? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so I've been an insurance guy through and through. I graduated uh, with a degree back in 1992 and nobody was hiring. It was like, okay, good luck finding a job. I thought I'd become a banker, you know, blah, blah, blah. It sounds like fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then I actually kind of backed into it. The um, uh, State Farm at the time was doing a, um, an online recruit or a on-campus recruiting. I met a couple of guys. The next thing I know, I got a job offer and I'm doing uh, um, accident benefit and bodily injury claims. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a completely different world. Um, you learn a lot about human nature doing that. Like yeah, I bet. found out quickly that Santa Claus doesn't exist and the Easter Bunny was soon thereafter. Crazy. But anyway, um, neat uh, neat group of people. Worked my way up through management. Got headhunted by uh, Gore Mutual on the claim side. Um, eventually worked my way over into the vice president of marketing and, uh, and broke relations. At which point started to meet Jamie and Tom who were... Um, uh, own the Austin Group, mm -hmm. and great set of guys. Um, and my other partner, Dave Silva, worked with me as well, and uh, we're able to uh, get involved from a strategic perspective and partnering partnering with these guys. And next thing you know, uh, Dave moved over and started working with them, and then uh, he convinced me to come on over. Um, didn't need a lot of convincing because it's a pretty cool spot. Yeah, so, it's a great yeah, spot. Yeah. So now, is there anything kind of going on in the future? Or is this is there some news to drop? Or? Yeah, a little bit of news. So uh, Dave and I are in the process of working with uh, Jamie and Tom in terms of the succession planning. So we're uh, starting to take uh, an active uh, ownership role, which is kind of cool. Yeah, That's yeah, super yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Congrats, yeah. man. I'm stoked for you guys. Yeah, we're really happy. And uh, uh, much like you guys, it's kind of neat watching the business grow. And, and um, you know, we've uh, we've got a core strategy that we're, uh, we're following on and acting on. And... Uh, we just got to stick to our knitting. Yeah, that's cool. So one of the things I want to talk about with you guys today is kind of what you kind of alluded to before about this idea that you guys focus a lot on culture, your mission, vision, values. Yeah. Um, so first question is like, why did you guys decide to take the time and energy and resources to kind of really crystallize those ideas? Because that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of work. Huge. Uh, the investment was, was big in terms of uh, time, effort, and energy. But what was awesome about it was it created a roadmap. I'm the I'm sort of the CFO and the HR guy, so I do a lot of the, the hiring and, and, and what have you. And it created a roadmap for me once we did our core competencies to go out and say, okay, I'm looking for an individual that has these characteristics and elements within their personality. And um, and the cool thing is that once you start to build that, your culture just comes with the people. And the neatest thing I think we've done in the last couple of years. Uh, would be, well, one of our most recent hires. Um, really cool guy, sales guy, had sales experience, yep. had never sold an insurance product. Right. Knew about insurance, but knew very little about it. We hired him based on the, the fit, the finish, the core values, and the idea being that, hey, we can teach you the technical. Uh, three months later, 
got his license and the guy's out there selling and he's selling commercial products which is awesome yeah, yeah he's doing a great job he's doing a great job and that's he fits awesome. in beautifully that's the whole idea like he fits in with what we're all about and the you know he's a millennial which is kind of cool because we're we're figuring out that whole uh situation <laughs> and uh and oh the millennials oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're awesome I just gotta figure them out. I'm on, <laughs> I'm on the cusp. I'm, there you go. Yeah, 83 baby. I think mine was like 84. <laughs> we have a whole group of them, and we, I just love them to death. But they're neat. They're super creative. Like, yeah. They're actually more so anything in your industry because it's just like they, you know, they're just awesome. Like they're, they're super creative. So then uh, coming back to this idea of, of, of making the decision to, to do it, because um, like what you talked about is kind of a product of, of getting oh, yeah. it right. Why did you guys decide to do it? We had to do it. We had uh, we sat down to develop a sort of a five year strategy, and in the process we realized, um, like good to great, the book which is great actually. Um, <laughs> right in the title. There you go. We had to pull the bus over. We had to move a few people around on the bus. We had to pull the bus over. We let some people on. We had to let a few people off. Never a fun thing, but um, for us to take the business further in our industry, which is changing. Mm -hmm. like there's a lot more digital online providers um, the banks are still dabbling the credit unions now are, are involved so we need to have the best possible team that we could to be able to uh, to focus on uh, on making the business successful so what made you decide like what was the catalyst for you guys because like I the reason I keep drilling down I don't want to let you off the hook on this no, one no, good yeah is because I hear a lot of times people say things like you know mission vision values is fluff you know there's it's it's just a writing on a board and it's not worth the time you know create a culture of accountability make sales get the job done all this stuff is you know corporate mumbo jumbo yeah so first of all what do you say to that and then second of course first of all maybe why did you like, what was the catalyst what was the, what was the thing that was just like itching you saying we got to do this guys what made you think that had to happen the driver actually funny enough was an employee opinion survey and, oh really? Yep. And we said uh, we sat down with the guys and we said, you know, when's the last time you sort of pinged your employees? It's been a while. Let's do an employee opinion survey with the agreement that we weren't just going to put it on the top shelf and go, well, that was fun. You know, we've got a, a very expensive beer coaster now. <laughs> no, let's like let's seriously, you know, if we're going to walk the walk, we better talk it or talk the talk, we better walk it. And we did. And and we there was some good. There's some great action in the employee opinion survey. There was some stuff we had to deal with. And from that we went, okay. Let's continue to do the great. With respect to the stuff we need to deal with, this requires a strategy. Yeah. And it requires, we need to start to build our mission, our vision, our values, and we need to start to uh, find folks that are prepared to line up with that. Um, the good thing is a core group of our staff um, were there. We had to go out and find some, some staff as well, which, uh, which is a good thing, because I had the, uh, well, we had the uh, sort of the map within which to do it. We have seen positive results. Awesome. It's helped in business growth for sure. And, and like I said, in the industry, that's changing. So. Well, and the atmosphere in the office is always super positive. Everybody is super fun to work with. Pretty neat by 